Okay, so real quick, I just wanted to share this with everybody. About a month or two ago, I had somebody leave a comment um, sharing this this verse with me, and there's a lot of Bible verses out there that um, speak about the firmament, and you know we're familiar with with a lot of them um, in Revelation, Genesis, uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Job, Psalms, and this was this was a new one to me, so I wanted to, to just uh, pass it along and, and maybe just comment comment on it real briefly. But this is out of Exodus chapter 24. Um, so just as a real brief refresher here, you know, this is when Moses and the Israelites have just been um, freed from the bondage you know, in Egypt, and they are wandering in the desert, and they come to Mount Sinai where. Uh, Moses receives the Ten Commandments um, from God. So they're all camped out at the base of, of Mount Sinai here. And, and so Exodus chapter 24, uh, starting in uh, verse 9, Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up. And then chapter 10 says, And they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there was something like a pavement made of sapphire, clear like the sky itself but he did not lay a hand on the leaders of the Israelites so they saw God and they ate and they drank so that's the NET uh, version New English translation I mean if you're really um, keen on King James Bible it's pretty much the same thing it says and they saw the God of Israel and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness um, other versions either use sapphire stone or a few of them say brilliant uh, brilliant blue lapis lazuli as clear as the sky itself so really um, after looking at all all the various translations kind of side by side it, you, you, they all pretty much pr portray the pretty much the same idea um, you know, you're looking at something that's like the sky, but not the sky, and it's blue. You know, made of sapphire or lapis lazuli, which is you know, a very bluish, um, bluish stone. And um, I just find it really interesting. And of course, this this little verse, you know, I don't even know if I've ever, I mean, I've read through the whole Bible several times. So obviously, I've read through it, but obviously, it's it's never one that I really stopped and gave much thought. I mean, just just the the point that they all saw, it says that they saw God, um, that in itself is kind of incredible to think about because honestly, I'd, I'd only really remembered that it was Moses who saw God. Of course, Moses then goes up by himself. The, the rest of the elders all stay there. He goes up by himself and he's up, um, up on top of the mountain and surrounded by clouds for 40 days and 40 nights and he gets the you know, they all think he's died or whatever, and they start worshiping the golden calf and everything. So, obviously, this verse, just all by itself, isn't some rock-solid proof of, of the biblical firmament or, or anything like that, but I think once you take it in conjunction with all the other instances in Scripture where it talks about the Sea of Crystal, um, you know, like in, in Ezekiel or in Revelation, and, you know, or the, the Sea of Glass, and... Uh, you know the the burnished bronze and all these different sort of various descriptions of the same basic idea this like metallic or crystalline kind of it's kind of like it's, it's a sea so it's it's this big expansive thing but um here it's just so interesting that it specifically says that god is walking on top of it and um you know, I, I suppose that the reason this verse might be kind of overlooked or kind of dismissed is because it's treated as some sort of uh, allegory or, you know, they're not looking at it or people choose to not look at it as being entirely literal. Like, of course, God doesn't walk on something above the sky or, or some sapphire pavement or whatever that is supposed to mean. And yet, but again, just what has been so amazing about this whole flat earth um, revelation or whatever it's just how it really drives home the whole question of uh, biblical literalism 
and here's just another perfect ex example because you know we're not we're not looking at something that's a parable it's nobody's having a, a dream or a vision you know to where you 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 could more easily say well it was just a it was a dream so these are symbolic things that people were saying now these guys were all awake and um you know it just says what it says as they see god and he's walking he's walking above them on what appeared to be a, a pavement made out of sapphire <laughs> so um you know if it was if there was some sort of symbolism or something it would have you'd have to explain why you would reach that conclusion otherwise you know you're just you're applying the same mode of biblical deconstructionism that there really just erodes any any tangible meaning from the bible at you know period if you're going to try and explain away a verse like exodus 24 10 as somehow being not entirely literal or you know then it's like you're you're kind of opening a pandora's box and you can do that with um, with anything I mean, was the burning bush really a bush that was burning i mean you know that's not possible right i mean that's you know, did they real did the did the Red Sea really split into two and they walked across, or you know, the plagues of Egypt or the Great Flood? I mean, once you cross that line, you see that it's you know you can't really kind of contain it. You can't just you you have nothing, you have no basis for just you know containing certain certain little verses in a in a box of symbolic interpretation. Whereas other things you, you insist on interpreting completely completely literally and I know um, Rob Skiba keeps hammering away on this a lot of people are, you know are, keep talking about this and I'm gonna keep hammering away on this because this is I think one of the whole the whole things is just what makes it so significant um, just beyond just the actual shape and size of the earth and all that but it, it really does you really just push push the whole question of biblical literalism you know now that now that this is in front of me and in front of all of us and you know it was one thing when we were kind of living oblivious to it but now that it's been it's been brought out into the light and we have to go look these you know these verses demand just the exact same examination and consideration as all these other verses that are you know def defy um, a lot of our comprehension and, and in certain respects but they still the way that they're written they demand a literal interpretation or, or really none at all you can't you know you can't pick and choose anyways I'm not really the point of sharing this isn't to, to try and prove that to, isn't to try and say that you know this this verse proves the, the reason for why the sky is blue or, or whatever um, although I mean it's obviously a very compelling um, thing to consider I mean, it would, you know, make a lot of sense, um, and there's a lot of people who have kind of been talking about these things. Um, you know, I found all that all that stuff fascinating, but um, really, the you know the the main takeaway for me at this you know at this point was just the basic issue of, of biblical uh, literalism itself, and um, just the idea of God, <laughs> that you read this text and I don't know what other conclusion to draw that. What it's saying is that God chose to reveal to these this group of men with Moses that they, they looked up and saw God Himself walking on the firmament. And you know, when we think of uh, of other verses where His you know His throne is is above the earth, and that's where He resides, and the earth is His footstool, and, and all these other all these other verses, you know, it really lines up. And again, it's like when you take all these together as a whole. Um, you know, it's one thing to take an individual verse here or there by itself and try and explain it away as, as some symbolic or allegory, but um, the more of these verses that you find and kind of insert them into the whole, you realize that, you know, how are you supposed to allegorize all of them away? I think you're just, it, it requires a conscious effort to, to ignore what, what the Bible says. And in all these, the, the fact that it uses so many diff slightly different descriptions to me only just makes it more, that much more compelling because obviously we're t they're describing something that is well it's kind of like this it's kind of like a sea of crystal it's like glass it's like bronze it's like but it's not actually any of these things it's like we're just, you're, the, the authors are just searching for you know the closest thing they can they can think of to, to try and describe it but it's obviously beyond normal everyday description and so that just 
that's just amazing you know the more I, I see all these all these pieces so I just wanted to share that with you guys I just I thought it was a really cool verse and just on a completely separate note uh, I'll just throw in a little quick message um, my brother Robbie over at Celebrate Truth just uh, yesterday released just released a documentary that he's been working on for a long time called The Global Lie um, and a bunch of different people were able to kind of contribute uh, material that w wound up being used in it um, including myself in, in a few places and um, so that was really cool he did an amazing job he really kind of trying to take take a slightly different approach to the whole topic of the flat earth and really focusing on the um, the connection between uh, Copernican cosmology um, with evolution and you know making that link um, between the two which you know for some people is, is a really easy thing to kind of see right off the bat and for other people it's you know they don't it's they don't see it at all and so it's kind of taking the time to try and you know work through those steps and, and kind of build the case for why you know why would they lie about such a thing and um you know this is something that has been um really on my mind and on my heart you know ever since i started getting into this so it was just it really made sense to kind of work together on that so yeah really exciting that he's finally put it out it's amazing uh, it's got a bunch of other people rob skiba's in there a ton um, obviously robbie and um, my perspective and several others so go check that out if, if you haven't i'm sure most of you most people here are already checking out Celebrate Truth's channel, but on the off chance that you haven't been over there yet, it's out. And so it's been really cool that Robbie and I were just, um, it's been really cool that, you know, Robbie was so on board with just wanting to do that. And he did an amazing job. So go check it out. All right.